We've been working our way through this 7-2-A, this FIFO, LIFO, weighted average problem, and now we're on to weighted average. The third one is the, the trickiest of the three, and I always like to, and I will re-explain this, uh, when I think of weighted average, I always think of this gas tank example. If I put 99 liters in my car and it cost me $1 per liter, means I got $99 worth of gas in my car. And let's say it's a 100 liter gas tank and I put one more liter in at $2 per liter. So that's $2 worth of gas in the tank. And somebody asked me, what's the average cost of the gas in your gas tank? I wouldn't say, oh, well, it's a buck 50. You know, the average between one and two, one plus two divided by two, right? I wouldn't say it's a buck 50 because of course, you know, I've got some gas that's a dollar and some gas that's $2. So I've got a buck 50 on average is the cost of gas in my gas tank. That's a simple average. A weighted average would say, no, no, no. This 99 liters should take precedence. So if the 99 liters takes precedent, that means it should have more weight in our average. And it does if we take a weighted average. Here's how you do it. You total the number of units, in this case liters. You total the total cost, in this case $101.99 plus plus two. And then rather than taking an average between one and two, you just go 101 divided by 100 and you get 1.01. That's 101 over 100. And that is your weighted average. Well, that principle is just all over this problem. So let's do it. Our beginning inventory, 20 uh, at $3 on May the 1st. So that is our average, 20 at 3 for 60 bucks. Uh, Okay, so next, May the 5th, we make a purchase. Now, whenever we make a purchase, we've got work to do as weighted averagers. So we, we uh, oops, sorry, I missed the purchases column. Uh, we purchase five at 325, and five times 325 is 1625. Uh, we had 20 at $3 for 60. We're adding to it five at 325 for 1625. And now I need to re-average this. How do I do that? Well, I add my total quantity, I add my total costs, and then I divide the two. So 20 plus 5 is, of course, 25. 60 plus 16 is, of course, 76. 76.25 divided by 25 gives us 3.05. And you can see it's not rounding at all. 3.05 is the number. So our average cost of inventory is 305. Now when I make sales, the sales are easy because I don't have to say, what did I buy first? What did I buy last? And keep track. I just say, oh, I sold 22 pieces of inventory. They all cost 305, right? That's the average cost of my inventory. So 22 times 305 is 6710. If I had 25 units, I sold 22. I'm left with three at 305. And three times 305 is 915. Moving on to May 20th, on May 20th, I make a purchase. I purchase seven units at 355. Seven times 355 is 2485. Uh, okay, so now I had three at 305 for 9.15. I'm adding to it seven at 355 for 2485. Summing it up here, Three plus seven is 10. Nine plus 24 is 34. 34 divided by 10 gives us $3.40 as our weighted average there. May 24th, I make another purchase. I purchase five at $3.70. Five times 370 is 1850. Now I had 10 units at 340. 34 oh, 34 dollars I'm adding five at 370 for 1850 again summing it up re-averaging oh, don't want to shift sales up control u underline is what I wanted to do here uh, 10 plus 5 is 15 34 plus 1850 is 5250 5250 
divided by 15 is $3.50. That's my average cost. Now on May 31st, I make a sale. What do I sell? I sell 13 units. What's the average cost of goods sold? $3.50. Now again, we're keeping in mind, I, I recognize that the revenue here is $130, but that number doesn't go anywhere on the chart, right? The chart is all about cost. 22 times 10 is 2 20. We're going to use those numbers later. Uh, 13 times 350, though. 4550, leaving me two units at 350 for $7. And that point, we have completed our uh, uh, inventory table here. Uh, we got to compute sales, cogs, and gross profit. Our sales rev, 220 plus 130 our total sales revenue is 350 dollars this did not change across the methods same every time our cost of goods sold the sum of this column 67 plus 45 equals 67 plus 45 112 bucks 350 minus 112 is 237 sales minus cogs is gross profit Okay, last step here, do a couple of journal entries. May 24th, we make a purchase. Well, this is always the same. When you make a purchase, debit inventory, credit AP. By the way, I'm answering uh, part C here. Just do journal entries for uh, May 24th and May 31st under all methods. So that's what we're doing. Uh, debit inventory, credit AP for the amount of the purchase on May 24th, which was $18.50. This is not different under any method. On May 31st, I make a sale. Remember, whenever we make a sale, there's always two pieces, debit AR or cash. It's unclear here. Credit sales, sales <laughs> rev. Uh, that amount hasn't changed. It's 130 bucks. Uh, the only difference between all of our methods is this COGS amount, cost of goods sold. Debit COGS, credit inventory for the amount from our table for this amount, $45.50 in this case. It was different in the other two methods. Okay, there we have it. We have solved 72A. We've made it to the bottom and we've uh, done the weighted average method, which I think is a little more challenging. If this has helped you in better understanding FIFO, LIFO, weighted average method, I do hope you'll give this video the thumbs up. All right, that's all for this video. See you next time.